BJP performs Jingle Bells with Band Baja and Bhagra. President Pranam Mukherjee crosses the Arctic Circle to meet Santa Claus. Bride Star rolls the town of Bethlehem first time in world history. Welcome to FFCC 24-7. I am Barkha And I am Ardham Goswami. Well Barkha, we have just received news that the star of the town of Bethlehem is creating quite a furor. We have heard that there is something very special about the star. It has the wise men, the shepherds and almost everyone in excitement and curiosity. Arnav, what do you think? Seems like the prophecy foretold by the prophet Isaiah is finally coming true. Is this star going to lead the people to the greatest gift of all? The gift that would shake the nations, have the government in, on its shoulders and call all the shots? Well, well, I think the world is in for a very pleasant surprise. Well, Barkha, we have our reporters at the site giving us live coverage of all the excitement all over. I'm sure our viewers are excited as well. Let us now first go to Gabbar Singh, who is with the wise men at the moment, and see what he has to say. Gabbar Singh, can you hear me? Well, Gabbar Singh, what is happening with the wise men? Have they told you about the star yet? While we wait to see what the wise men have discovered, we have also received news that the shepherds are also heading to the town of Bethlehem. They have claimed to see stars and angels. Well, Barakha, some are seeing stars and some are seeing angels. I wonder what's happening to the world. Yes, Arnav, I seriously wonder too. Let's hear what our reporter Sundari has to say. Thank you, Sundari, for the update. And yes, where in Bethlehem is the star and where is the star leading them? We have more in store. Stay tuned. We'll be back after a short break. The shepherds and the wise men are on their way to Bethlehem to search the Messiah. Our reporters Gabar Singh and Sundari have joined them in their search. Well, Barkha, Bethlehem is creating news world over. We have just received news that the Romans are also heading towards the town to register for a census that has been ordered by King Caesar. The town is jam-packed and all the guest houses, the hotels and inns are overbooked with capacity. Amidst all this confusion and chaos, where on earth are the shepherds and the wise men going to find this baby? While we wait for a reporter Basanti to give us the latest from Bethlehem, we have in our studio two very special guests, Reverend Shavis Williams and Jewish priest Mary Benny, who would be joining us tonight. Well, let's just see what they have to say about this star leading to the Messiah. Welcome to our studio. Joining us today is Mary Benny. So Mary, you are the Jewish priest, right? Is this star going to lead them to the promised king of the Jews? Is he going to overthrow King Herod's destiny? Can you hear me, Mary? Yes. Can you? Yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah, there's a big chaos going on in Bethlehem and everybody is saying that this uh, savior is being born for the Jewish people and is going to dethrone King Herod, but it's not going to be that way because we expect the Messiah to be born in a beautiful place and not in a manger. Uh, well, what do you have to say? Reverend Shabbos Williams is also joining us. What do you have to say, Mr. Shabbos? Thank you so much, Arnab and uh, Barka, for having me over at the studio. This is something so unique and strange. Uh, this season brings about so much, and I can understand very well my, my friend and my opponent who's coming against the reality and the truth of what is happening. But every good thing that ever happens, my dear friends, comes about with a different of difference in feelings and emotions and, 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 and just differences in, in minds. And there will be some people who will understand the reality and the truth about the season of Christmas. What the Bible has to say, we are not against what the Bible has to say, but we are expecting our king in a different way. And this king that... Excuse me, excuse me, I want to object. The, my, my, my friend is always trying to say our king. I want to say who is this king? He this is, is the king, king from heaven above. We are talking about Barkha and Arnab. Okay, you on got on to realize reference, reference, reference. Yes. Hold on there. Yes. Please let Mary Benny speak, please. Yes. You know, when you speak, I listen. When I speak, it will be very good, right? Remember no, because this is 
is sending out the wrong message. This is sending out the wrong message to the viewers. It is not about our king. It is not about my king. It is not about this one's king. It is about the king and the savior of the world who has come. Let's hear a different opinion. Let's hear a different opinion. There should be no difference in opinions. This is it. Whether you like it or not, the king has been born. Accept him. Yes. Yes. But we are expecting the king to be born in a different way, not like this in a manger. How can a king be born My in a question manger? is, how can, can we Jewish expect community a still God a king? in the way, how can we expect God about? to perform in a way that we think in our own small little frame of mind that we have? Our God is always a God of uh, uniqueness, creativity and surprises. I don't think we can box and put God in a small little container of our brains and say, okay, this is okay, how okay, a king should let's be. Let's hear what the Jewish people have to say. This is what you have to say, but as the Jewish people, we are still expecting our king and our king. My friend can keep expecting for the next 10,000 years. It will never happen. Let them keep waiting. The Jewish people they will go to the grave and they will never be expecting anything. And set us free. But I just want to say the king and the savior has already come. The Bible says that for God so loved the world. Now love does not keep you killing where you keep expecting for the rest of your life and nothing happens. And people keep on waiting for years and years. But the king has already come at the right appointed time. And the time is now because the Bible says it. It's been said all throughout. That in the, it has been confirmed in the scriptures. And the way this birth has taken place fits in exactly, accurately, systematically according to the scriptures that have been foretold. Well, Reverend, what does the world need to know about this? We've heard the wise men say that this is the greatest gift to mankind and he's offering them love. What do you have to say about this? There are three perspectives we find in uh, this incident that has taken place that is happening right now for this Christmas season. One is the incident about what my friend is relating this incident as like it cannot be expected because uh, they, they are not being able to digest that the king and a messiah should be born in such a way like this. Where he's born in a manger which is again apparently confirmed in the word of God that he will be born in the most lowly, in the most lowest estate uh, in a condition that never expected. And that is what has happened. It's confirmed. So for some people, and we find that uh, with three different categories of people that were there. One are those, uh, the shepherds, who actually apparently don't even know what's going on, who are not even educated about anything. How would a Messiah be born? Who is the Messiah? Where will this Messiah come from? How would it ever happen? And what does the message of salvation and good news mean to them they don't have any idea about it a bunch of ignorant uh, uh, people who are just going on with their menial jobs of everyday day to life uh, day to day life and nothing to look forward to except for their everyday livelihood that they were living off or are you the second category of people who are like my worthy opponent who are still sitting and waiting and watching and wasting time for the new Messiah that will come one day in search for the Messiah. And generations after generations would die and go anticipating, waiting, looking out, searching and still run around in the blackness of this world. Run around in, with emptiness and run around with so much of a hollow lifestyle that they would have. Searching and searching and searching when we never know the reality. Are you going to be one of those who wants to live in groping in the darkness, groping in the lostness and still find yourself empty? I don't think. Don't let your anticipation delay you any further. Don't let your, your, your uh, waiting upon be so delayed that you lose all hope. But even if you are losing all hope and you're waiting for an answer, I want to tell you today, there is no better a day than this where you realize that Jesus has been born into this world for you and for me. And today is the day of salvation. You can open up your heart and you can open up your mind and you can open up yourself and say, God, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Or are you the third kind of the wise people? And that was the wise men 
who actually prepared, and they were also anticipating kind of people. They waited, but they prepared themselves, and the moment a miracle took place, they accepted and they moved towards the reality and the fact and the truth. They, they started their journey to come to the newborn baby Jesus Christ that was born into this world. And they came with their gifts, they came with their offerings, they came with whatever they had, and they humbled themselves in spite of being the most richest men, being kings and rulers and princes, having everything that they had, they humble themselves and they bow down and they say, it's not about us, it's about Jesus Christ being born into this world as the Messiah and He is the Lord of our lives. And they bowed down and they gave their gifts. I want to challenge you tonight. Would you believe Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior this Christmas? Now this Christmas, would not just be a season of fellowship and fun and fiesta and get-togethers and banquets and dinners and cake cutting and Christmas Father and Santa Claus and songs and the Christmas tree and all the uh, furore of all the things that go on or is it going to be Jesus the real meaning Jesus the reason for the season that is Jesus being born into this world in our lives. Uh, my prayer is you would be like those wise men. Uh, and even as you move forward, may God bless you as you celebrate this Christmas. And with this, I just want to leave this newsroom and the news place where you are being in, uh, I'm being interviewed. And I just want to tell Barkha and I want to tell uh, Arnab that you can go further and telecast and say that Jesus has been born and wishing you guys a very happy Christmas. Uh, and a blessed new year, and may you have a new hope for your lives in the future. God bless you. Signing out. This is Pastor Chavez Williams. Well, thank you special guests for joining us tonight and telling the world about this greatest gift that was given to mankind. Right now, let's go over to Bethlehem where our Basanti, our special correspondent, is giving us live coverage and see what's happening there. Over to you, Basanti. Santi, we've just received news that the shepherds and the wise men have just arrived at Bethlehem and they are heading towards a manger called the Donkey's Inn. What do you have about all this? And we've also heard that the baby has arrived. Over to you. Well, thank you reporters. It has been truly exciting. The baby has arrived and lives are not going to be the same anymore. And if you want to see your life change, then you better make this gift, the greatest gift that was given to mankind, the Lord of your life. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he has been given freely for all to receive. This is Arnav Goswami. And Barakadat. Signing off from FFCC 24-7 tonight. Thank you for joining us and have a very blessed Christmas and a happy new year. Thank you.